Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com, and today it's just a helpful tip with a little bit of a reason why it's important and some measurements. The helpful tip is if you have an electronic device like the Minty Boost, and uh, it has no on-off switch anywhere to speak of, you should take the batteries out when you're not using it um, to actually charge something. Now that's probably true with any electro electronic device, but you know I, I leave I leave batteries in my Fluke for a year at a time. I, you know it's no real huge concern. I want it to be ready when I pull it out. But you can't do that with this one because the quiescent current that these chips draw when it's not even charging is uh, high enough to pretty much make the batteries useless after about. Uh, Oh, let's say four months, you're nearly not going to be using it to charge anything. And that's because it eats up the batteries in its own uh, quiescent current for powering this chip, even though you don't actually are demanding any power out of the port. So rather than, well, you could actually put a switch on it someplace, but get yourself a little piece of uh, wax paper, pull back the battery, stick it down in there. And uh, I've, I've been using this one before. You let that basically break the current in the battery and it acts as your switch and now you don't have to take your batteries out and you can leave it in here for you know as long as the shelf life is of the battery it's essentially it's the same thing as taking the battery out um, I found this out the hard way I didn't have this little trick in and these batteries uh, after about four months of not using it they got really wore down and of course they started reacting chemically it actually spewed out all over top of this. It ate away the casing on on the on the capa electrolytic capacitors here. It, it etched the board a little bit up here, or the casing here. I couldn't even get it all cleaned off. It actually took the solder mask off the board. I cleaned it up again, and it works. But uh, that's the tip. Um, it's a quick and easy way of leaving your batteries in your Minty Boost when you travel and not worry about the quick quiescent current taking off all the juice for this chip. And let's measure it. So to measure it, you get yourself a two-sided two piece of uh, copper clad board and you solder a wire to either side and then make sure that, um, well, that you're not going to short out on the can or anything. You just, I use some electrical tape. And you just pull it back like this and you just drop it in. And now you actually uh, are making a circuit that goes from this side of the copper clad through your meter back in through this side of the copper clad and down. And now we can measure that quiescent current and we'll bring it over here I got my meter set to uh, microamps and uh, it's uh, churning away at it, it's actually gulping power in the in this chip as it you know basically is doing its job even when it's not charging and so we can see it's bump, bumping around quite a bit we'll put it in the min max here for a little bit and you can see it's going to be drawing about 200 microamps, or that is about 0.2 milliamps. If you do the math on that, you know, the battery's completely dead in a year, but still, it's not really, you know, you've already used a big chunk of your battery um, in even six months or four months. So, yeah, definitely use that little uh, um, little paper trick. Um, preferably some, you know, a stiff piece of plastic would work. Let's go ahead and do a trend with it. So, we'll We'll uh, record for one second, um, for like one minute here, and then uh, we'll see the trend on that. There, we got over a minute worth of data collected, so let's stop that. There are one second intervals, let's go ahead and trend that. Boy, it's pretty pulsy, that's for sure. Let's uh, go ahead and zoom in on some of those pulses. Yeah, that is uh, pretty... Pretty jittery, and that's going on all the time. When uh, if you don't, if, if you actually just have your batteries in your device there. Okay, um, just this has a, a, a reasonable burden voltage um, in the microamp range. Um, the microamp range on my microcurrent from Dave Jones's EEV blog. I actually bought this many years ago. Handy little device. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, check that. It only has a 10 ohm um, worth of uh, burden uh, ohmage, or it's, it's essentially 1 millivolt per microamp range. It'll be only a 10 ohm uh, burden resistor, so um, we'll see what that gives us any different results. I'm pretty sure there's not going to be a burden voltage problem with this meter. It doesn't even look like it yet. 
but just just for the sake of it, uh, we have the microcurrent at uh, one millivolt. It'll read one millivolt, one millivolt per mi microamp, because that's what I have the switch set to on here. One millivolt per microamp. And so, if I'm reading a hundred uh, uh, millivolts over here, that's a hundred microamps. So, if you just substitute this reading here for uh, microamps, then then that's what this is actually reading, microamps. And you can see it's pretty close to the same thing. We're looking like it's a, just a little bit lower when I'm using the uh, microcurrent. It's uh, around 170, 80 instead of 200. But still, I mean, this is basically saying uh, 180 microamps. And so you definitely are using some quiescent current um, when you have the batteries in here. So here we're reading the uh, 200 and some um, microamps um, when this is just running in its quiescent mode. I'm going to stick this in now and we'll uh, show that that uh, does break the circuit essentially. I'll back off one of these batteries, shove it in there, and that drops down to not 200, but 0 .04. So all but essentially zero. So there. That's how you keep your Minty Boost from burning up your batteries. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up if you liked it. Quick tip and uh, thanks for joining.